Let me see. What's going on, King Girl TV, man? Back with another reaction. I'm finna watch the, uh, I mean, I said watch. React to this boy Speed. See how he blew up. My bad, y'all. Yeah, we just gonna <laughs> see how Speed blew up. This is I Show Speed, streaming to 300,000 live viewers while watching the World Cup. If we rewind just a year ago, he was streaming to zero people in his mom's basement. How did this 17-year-old become the biggest streamer in the world? This is the untold story of I Show Speed. How do I change the settings? I mean, the title. I, I, I guess I gotta get on my phone. Speed hit the go live button for the first time on December 27th, 2018. With a dream, Bro, no camera, baby. and in 720p, Speed entered the content creator world playing Fortnite. As he continued to stream, he became more and more comfortable playing in front of an audience. He even ended up adding a face cam to his streams. The stream was still as low production quality as it could get, <laughs> with the game audio being picked up by his own speakers, so it sounded like you were listening to the stream in a submarine. <laughs> Yeah, damn, it was boy. clear that Speed, like every other aspiring streamer, was trying to steadily make improvements to his streams, but as time went on, it became more and more obvious to everyone that Speed wasn't just another aspiring streamer, but something extraordinary. I <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Most people think Speed blew up overnight, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. Speed's success was hard fought, constantly changing up his approach, damn. more calculated than you could ever imagine. Speed's approach to streaming started out similar to what any of us would do. He streamed what he enjoyed, but grappled with the balance of streaming what his viewers wanted versus what he truly wanted to do. Over time, Speed got tired of playing Fortnite and decided to switch to NBA 2K. Streaming 2K every day for months, Bro. he was able to consistently get around 10 viewers tuning into his streams. This is Even so with stressful. a small audience, Speed grew interested in making content that those 10 people would really enjoy and want to come back for. <laughs> Speed noticed that a particular behavior would spark excitement from his viewers. This shit don't never let me get a contest, bro. All right, bro. When Damn. he was changing, there was a more active chat and viewers stayed longer. So his content became mainly based around what his viewers wanted. In fact, Speed's small community loved his raging so much that they would timestamp where in the stream he raged, allowing others to easily access the funniest parts quickly. That is crazy. This eventually <laughs> caught Speed's eye and thus led to him not only streaming, but also posting rage compilation videos. These were the first videos on his channel, which got noticeable views. After the rage compilations, Speed tried his hand at wagers, content which involves betting money against your opponent on the outcome of the game. This of course makes any game automatically more interesting, which leads to viewers staying longer. In one video, he appears to be scammed by one of his wager opponents, but his reaction was worth a lot more money than he could have ever earned in that wager. Why do I trust that shit, bro? Furthering into the NBA scene, Speed wanted to differentiate himself amongst other streamers by choosing a position that very few streamers would choose. Although being a post scorer was inherently less exciting, Speed knew his personality could make up for the less exciting gameplay and he might find a totally new audience. As he got his ass NBA good. streamers progressively left the scene, Speed took more market share by furthering his brand as a post scorer. Most big streamers are either very skilled or very entertaining. Speed had both. Bro. At this point, Speed had been able to stream to an average of 400 viewers a day. Little did he know, cool. a day was coming that would double his viewers. January 30th, 2021. Speed enters a 2K 1v1 tournament. Streaming competitively in any game has huge potential. If you make it far into any tournament, it is likely that other competitors will watch the tournament live either when they are knocked out or are waiting for their next game. This in turn could bring in more viewers to your stream. Speed didn't end up winning this tournament, but he had a reaction like this, so it was really <laughs> awesome. That's it. Damn! I'm never playing guard again! I'm never playing guard again! That's who Casey is. Viewers all stream long. But if someone gets that viewership, it doesn't mean they've gone viral, it means they have potential. 
and Speed took that potential, ran with it, and never looked back. Shut up! Shut up! What a idiot. I fucking knew it! Oh. Speed didn't want to just be a 2K <laughs> streamer. He knew that wasn't his sole purpose, he wanted more. His way to achieve that? Making videos answering very personal questions that most people will stay to listen to. Although the viewers did not roll in right away, in fact they were less than what he was getting from 2K. Luckily for Damn. Speed, he didn't care about the short term and kept doing these Q and A's. Have I ever done stuff with a female, bro? The answer to that question is yes, bro. I mean, bro, like, I don't know why I think in my eyes I'm like just a little, bro. Yeah. His loyal audience expanded and his confidence grew. Whether it was in real life content or streaming a new game, viewers came and stayed for his personality. As soon as he was gaining more momentum, something very scary happened to Speed. Oh shit. YouTube's discoverability allows for a stream like this to pop off because. It may only start with a few thousand viewers, but everyone's interested in someone getting their account hacked. How did it happen? Can they get it back? How do I prevent this from happening to me? These are just a few questions that might pop into your head, so people click on the stream. Compare this to Twitch, where this exact stream would just sit in the 2K category and never go beyond there. Speed eventually does get his account back, and he ends the stream with a speech that connects him to new and old viewers of his channel. We're back! I show speed! YT dash I show speed! When speed got close to 400,000 <laughs> subscribers, he decided to stream his sub growth. With the power being in the viewer's hands, now they realize they can get speed to rage by unsubbing right in front of his eyes. The time is here! Are y'all ready? But why is y'all unsubbing like damn? Oh! If you Damn watch this clip again, you will see that Speed's initial reaction is actually a smile, thinking it's funny that people are doing this. And then he remembers his persona, and well... After playing 2K, Speed began streaming himself playing a variety of games in which he could show off his rage, and the best bet was to try his luck at horror games. These games would produce clips in which Speed would get scared and then start barking loudly. Tight, tight, shit. These clips then went viral and brought in another new audience for speed. Like, bro, 600, what's the fuck? 700, 800,000, 900,000, and 1 million. But this would be just the beginning of speed's rise to fame. When speed goes viral, those clips don't just pop on YouTube. They are resurfaced to every social media platform you can imagine. However, only one in particular mattered. The app that could get cancelled tomorrow, but that without explanation has the most capability to skyrocket someone to fame. TikTok. TikTok. TikToks of speed started to pop up on just about everyone's feed that expressed interest in the streaming world. At this point, without realizing, speed had created a very sustainable ecosystem for him to grow. Clips of him would go viral on TikTok, motivating more of his viewers to post them, and thus spreading speed's name to people who have never watched one of his streams before. Speed was seeing all the good that can come with becoming a fast-growing internet personality, but he was about to experience all the bad that came with it too. Help, how do I change my IP? I cannot stream whoever is booting me. Please stop, hit me up on Twitter ID. We can figure something out. I need y'all help. I'm not gonna lie, whoever keep booting me, I'm gonna get the cops involved. At the start of July 2021, <laughs> Speed had accidentally leaked his IP on stream and this would cause a bunch of trolls and hackers to boot off his internet whenever they felt like it. Hey, Paul, what the fuck? Nigga just doxed my shit! Speed made multiple shorts talking about how he might quit streaming because of this. But thankfully, after nearly two months of randomly being booted off stream, Speed finally had a new IP. While he was dealing with all of this, Speed's career was about to take off once again, as one of his viral clips went to the right person's phone. Aiden Ross was the most popular 2K streamer, and one of those who left like, the game bro, when it started to fall off. Aiden, being impressed with Speed's growth, invited him to LA and this, you could say, was Speed's biggest breakthrough. He was starting to enter the inner circle, and at this point, if he would play his cards right here, then the rest would be very easy. There was something holding Speed back at this point. You see, Speed was only 16 at the time, which meant he was a minor, so he had to ask permission from his parents, most notably it being his mom, if he was allowed to go to LA. <laughs> there have been many moments during Speed's own stream where the viewers can see his mom get annoyed or angry at Speed, causing the chat to spam L mom. 
Dismissing his mom's advice, Speed went to LA anyway, and after returning, he must have had a very enlightening conversation because his content changed. He started to invite girls on stream, and whether he was pretending to be interested in them or not, it became like a reality dating show and kept viewers watching to find out if they would actually start dating. Another aspect that changed drastically was Speed's involvement in music. On the 23rd of September, Speed would go on to drop his first music video, Bounce That Ass, and then would go on to <laughs> drop many, many more that most notably became Shake. These songs would go on to do millions of streams and bring the creator's name to so many more people, especially on TikTok where these songs were used in many posts. Speed ends up getting Bluestacks, which is a phone emulator on your computer, which basically allows you to use a phone on a PC. Speed gets an app that is pretty much a magic eight ball, but with a talking cartoon. You ask a question and it responds, except he would ask very hard hitting questions, always with an expectation. If Talking Ben didn't meet Speed's expectation, well, what do you yeah, think? Right. Ben. Ben, do you support Black Lives Matter? Yes. Do you support LGBTQ? Man, what the Speed continued to ask Ben questions, and well, try not laughing at this. Uh. Yo, Ben, you wanna see my ass? No. You wanna see my ass shake? Yes. <laughs> like that? No. Why? But Speed ends up having a falling out with Ben after this incident. Ben, do you not get? You are a fat piece of. F know that right? No. Yes. Nobody loves you. Yes. Nobody will never care about you. Uh. Speed is better than you. Yeah. Ah! Ah! The fuck Speed happened? was hit with two waves of heavy controversy. The oh, first of which shit. being from Twitch. The streamer was on an e-date hosted by Aiden Ross, and when it was his chance to speak to the girl, Speed did this. Would you, uh, reproduce something? <laughs> no, because that means our kids will have to intertwine, and then their kids, no. Who gonna stop me? Damn. I will. Who's gonna stop me? I will. If we're the last two people on Earth, who gonna stop me? Jeez. You're not stopping me! Did Speed go too far with this joke? Oh, well, Twitch certainly thought so, because they banned the streamer from streaming on their platform indefinitely. This, however, wasn't the only controversy Speed was going to be involved in. On April 6th, Jake Lucky, the famous esports reporter, tweeted a clip that showed Speed being very toxic and misogynistic towards a female inside the game, Valorant. Damn, bro, mm -hmm. shut up, bro. I know how to play this game. I'm not a noob, all right? God damn! You don't know how to play the fucking game. What? What, bitch? Bitch? Is a bitch talking to me? Is a female talking to me? Am I no? No, no, no. Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Oh, how do I tell Is a female talking to me right now? Is a female talking to me? Get off the fucking game and do your husband dishes, bitch. Shut up. This tweet led to Riot Games banning Speed from playing any of their titles on stream. Speed then put out an apology, starting off with the fact that he wasn't in the best mindset when that was clipped, and he had people making fun of his dead aunt through donations all day. Speed aunt, but to crazy no cap. <laughs> Though this was a negative part of his streaming career that still affects bro, him, what the fuck, it's crucial bro. to him growing as a person and understanding what type of influence he has. At this point, Speed's now streaming to tens of thousands of people consistently but it doesn't explain how he's able to get 300,000 people concurrently to watch him at the World Cup. This donation right here, this is the beginning of that explanation. What soccer football team do you support? Cristiano Ronaldo, Siwi! Simple as that, bro. One donation, or $1.79, puts speed on a path to a meme that would be celebrated throughout the entire content world his obsession with Cristiano Ronaldo, and his newfound journey to meeting him in person. Speed started checking his Reddit more often, where his fans would try to convince him that Messi is better than Ronaldo, to which Speed never entertained. Speed's love for Ronaldo became so viral that Ronaldo's own son, Ronaldo Jr., called Speed on stream. Show your face, y'all, so I can see this actually. <laughs> With his streams now Tell getting to 100,000 live concurrent viewers, Speed was growing at an unprecedented rate. Speed had multiple real-life footballers know who he is. Speed wanted to make sure everyone knew about his love for Cristiano Ronaldo, 
he went as far as making a song about him. At this point in his career, Speed was breaking records and gaining subscribers at the fastest rate imaginable. The boost from his new football fan base definitely helped him do this. Speed was fast approaching the milestone of 10 million subscribers, but Speed made a mistake. In mid-July 2021, he streamed himself playing the Jenny mod on Minecraft. This mod, well, added sex to Minecraft. And Speed, without knowing this, would effectively show Minecraft Damn. porn to 100,000 viewers. Speed was hit with a heavy channel strike in which he responded by saying, Peace out, y'all. Goodbye. You know. <laughs> they gave me a strike from the last stream, the one stream. He told his audience he was quitting and won't be able to ever stream again. But this wasn't the case as we all know it. Speed eventually had the strike ban lifted after a week and hit 10 million subscribers. Now with an ever-growing fan base and his name being the biggest it ever has, you are likely to come by people who think they can copy Speed. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but this is just weird. During this time we saw a content creator that goes by the name White Boy M, who accurately copied Speed's entire mannerisms and how he talks, but of oh, course wait. everyone could tell what he was doing and this spiraled into its own meme. August 9th, 2022, Speed would be swatted live on his own stream. The act of swatting is a malicious attempt by internet trolls to call police to someone's address. This is a very dangerous and illegal action and in the past swatting has even led to death. Just a year ago, during the months of July and August, where Speed experienced his internet being booted, he was once again being targeted by toxic trolls online. I don't care. Oh, okay. What's going on? Swatted. That's what that is. Y'all know what swatting is? Yeah, it, it happened to his boy Aiden last night. Okay. So this is one of those silly things that people... Yeah. Speed's name was getting bigger and bigger to the point where the biggest content creator group in the UK, the Sidemen, invited Speed to be featured in their charity football match. This was an incredibly big deal for Speed, and on a pitch filled with some of the biggest names around, like Mr. Beast and KSI, one man stole the show. And that man? <laughs> Speed. He was by far the most entertaining and memorable part of the event <laughs> and currently sits at 15 million views. Bro, the Following fuck, the charity bro. match, Speed made friends with Chunks another very popular UK-based creator, this would lead into Speed meeting Lil Nas X at Chunk's house. Speed gained a very important connection because of this trip to the UK, one of the most notable being Mr. Beast. Soon after, Speed was featured in Mr. Beast's video, yes, Last to Take Hand Off Jet, keeps it. After leaving the UK, Speed would drop one of his most popular songs to date, World Cup. Speed would return to the UK, but with a singular goal in mind, to meet his idol Cristiano Ronaldo. Sadly, Speed would attend two matches during this time in the UK, and both times Ronaldo wasn't selected to be there. Dang. During this time, Speed was invited by Sky Sports, the biggest sports network in the UK, to be on their show before the match. Unfortunately, Speed's past controversies caught up with him. The sports network saw the tweet of Speed yelling misogynistic things in a Valorant game, and they announced all content, including Speed, was to be taken down on their channel immediately. Oh, While Speed wee. was more upset over not being able to meet his idol Ronaldo in person, he would not stop there. Before leaving the UK in early November, Speed would do one more stream in which he met Ronaldo, the fake Ronaldo. Welcome. He turned. <laughs> Ronaldo! Yo, bro, how did y'all do this, bro? Well, we got you. We got you. We, we had got you. We, we, we put in some strings. Like, this is yeah. like, no, like, that's dead ass Ronaldo. <laughs> he like, what the fuck? He trying to see. <laughs> You're making him shy, Yeah. I'm the entire stream felt really weird to his viewers. Seeing this stream was sponsored by Paradox, a crypto company, and they were promoting their crypto game all throughout this stream, even making the fake Ronaldo promote it. The worst part of all this was the fact that Speed left his mic on when he was told to mute it by the company people. Many fans did theorize Speed could have left it unmuted on purpose to let his fans know that it was a scam. This caught the eyes of everyone, even a popular YouTuber by the name of Copyzilla, who actively exposes these crypto creator scams. This Damn. event did affect Speed as he was constantly called I Show Scam by his viewers. It made him pretty upset and even went as far as to threaten to quit streaming for the three millionth time. During the World Cup in Qatar, Speed went live randomly to show that he was in fact in the country. He had a lot of people coming up to him and Speed was there for one reason, to see his idol win the World Cup over Messi. 
Speed would go live during World Cup games and bring an audience of over 200,000 people. It's uh, easy. Speed would go live during the Portugal vs. Switzerland round of 16 game. But as he streamed, Speed learned a sad truth. The person he came all the way around the world for would not be starting. Where's Ronaldo at, bro? No, bro! No! But in the 73rd minute, Speed's dreams came true, as he witnessed Ronaldo be subbed onto the game, and this would be the first time Speed saw Ronaldo in the flesh. Speed would go live one more time during Portugal's next game, and this time Ronaldo started. Sadly, tragedy struck as Speed watched his idol Ronaldo be knocked out of the tournament. Many of Speed's fans all he thought sick. the streamer would leave Qatar as the reason he was there didn't matter anymore. Ronaldo was eliminated. But Speed was going to stay for the entire tournament in the hopes that Messi wouldn't win it. Speed would go live a final time during the World Cup final, Argentina vs France. And this time, Speed would bring a total of 300,000 concurrent viewers to his channel. That's crazy. Speed started the stream wearing Ronaldo's jersey, and he was pretty upset when Argentina started to take the lead. But as France made their comeback, Speed changed his jersey to France. Unfortunately for Speed, Messi's Argentina won the World Cup, in which Speed very annoyingly revealed he had been wearing an Argentina shirt underneath the France one. He didn't keep it on for long, though. <laughs> this event ended, and in just two years, a boy who went from 5 to 10 viewers on 2K was at the biggest sporting event in the world, streaming to 300,000 people. I don't know what is next in store for Speed. But whatever it is, I'm sure he'll make it entertaining. That's crazy. And then make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe.